Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. And in this DCS AH64D video, we'll be taking a look at the cold start. Now, originally I had planned the cold start to be the final video of this little series, but we're pretty far along and I know how eager many of you are to see this video. So we thought we'd do it a little bit earlier than planned. I will still do the George video, but it'll actually come after this one instead. Now, as you may be aware, we have the guide available. And in that guide, we have a whole chapter about starting this aircraft. Uh, it's very detailed and very by the book. And what I'll be doing in this video is based on that, doing a bit of a abbreviated version that works best for me. Um, I fully expect you guys to have even greater abbreviated versions that work best for you. So with no further ado, let's get started. First, I'm going to close my door and my CPG will close theirs. Now let's do a pre-flight from left to right. So here on the external lights, we're day. So I'm going to go white and bright, formations to bright, uh, internal, set my signals to bright, and my primary and standby instruments to bright. I'm going to make sure that both my power levers are off. My rotor brake is set to off. You don't really need to have the rotor brake set to on if you're on the ground in a windy day. Uh, or you know, if after you land and you're shutting down, you want to get that main rotor RPM down faster. Uh, coming over, we can see that the parking brake is pulled out, indicating that the parking brake is engaged. The uh, standby attitude indicator, SAI, is caged, indicated by the red flag. The CMOS is set to safe. And at this point, we could also set up our knobs on the comp panel for the volumes we wish. Next step is turning on the battery. And the battery is this large black knob here. Uh, to turn it from off to battery, we'll simply put the mouse over it and right mouse click on it. And we do that up on the EFD, we can see that the tail wheel is locked and we have low pressure in the oil accumulator. Below that, we have our radios with the frequencies. And at the very bottom, we have our fuel, transponder code, and our Zulu time. With battery power, we can do a light test Now we can do a fire test. So we have channel one and channel two. We'll test channel one first by putting the mouse over it and then left mouse button clicking and holding. Engine one fire. Engine two fire. APU fire. Aftec fire. Okay. And now we'll do channel two. Same thing, but we're going to use the right mouse button and hold it. Engine one fire. Engine two fire. APU fire. Aftec fire. Okay, and that's all set. Next step is turning on the APU, or the auxiliary power unit. And that's a small engine that's gonna give us power and air to get the engine started. To do that, it's this uh, button here, just below the battery. We're gonna lift the cover, press the button. We see APU start, APU power on. And now we hear it come to life. You probably heard that little deedle deedle, uh, just like the Hornet, a uh, same aircraft manufacturer. Coming back down, you can see we have an on light on the APU and we're good to go. Let's go to our TSD, utility, turn on the Doppler, and near the top center, we see our position confidence for INU1 and INU2. So right now our alignment is still pretty rough. And over time, this is gonna come down until this shows green for a good uh, high precision confidence, but this will take time. So what we'll do is in the meantime, we'll uh, take a look at some of the systems to set up. Let's go to the uh, top level first on the TSD. This is a good opportunity to uh, put down waypoints, create alternate routes, uh, put down control measures, uh, set up, our display and our show and so on. Uh, next, let's take a look at our DMS. This pretty much mirrors what we see up here on the EUFD, but we can also go to our WCA, our warning cautions advisories, and reset those. Let's go to the comm button. So for the early access to set up our radios, we'll go to B2 for man or manual. And here we can set up our radios for VHF, UHF, FM1, and FM2. So for instance, for VHF, uh, we have it assigned right now to 121. Let's change that to 122. So bezel button to the KU, 122, 
enter, and now it's 122. If you look up on the EUFD, we can also see 122 as the selector frequency, but the previous one, 121.5, is still there. If you wanted to revert back to it, we'd simply hit the swap button, and now we're back to 121.5. Next, let's look at the fuel page. On the fuel page, let's uh, enable the Rabi tank, confirm our cross feed to normal, transfer it to auto, and if we wanted to, we could do our fuel check like we talked about in the fuel video. Next, flight page, we'll go to set, and we're gonna set a low altitude warning. So we'll go to low, enter the altitude of feet, say 25 feet, enter. There you hear the indication. Now let's go to the weapon page utility make sure that gun missile and rockets are all enabled good power and it's a good time to set up our weapons so we go to gun you check our burst limit say 10 is good uh, for missiles this is a great time to set up your l or fd codes as well as your seeker codes make sure you're not conflicting with other players out there go to rockets we can set our quantity but let's say we go back up to the uh, top level we have a foresight option so I'm gonna put on my iHads HDU monocle. I'm back out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to uh, foresight, as you might imagine. So I'm gonna hit a foresight, iHads. I'm gonna place my line of sight reticle in the middle. Try to keep the uh, yellow concentric lines pretty much equidistant from each other. Close enough there back a little further and then once I'm aligned in there I'm gonna hit the foresight now bezel button now I'm aligned up go back to the TSD see how we're doing the alignment not quite there yet so before I get the engine started let's do two more things I'm gonna double check my MVS mode uh, is correct off for daytime I'm going to uncage my SAI Looks good. So to start the engines, we're going to come back to the left side, and we have two engine start switches. Uh, engine number one is on the left. Engine number two is on the right. So we're going to do number one first. To start it, we're going to put the mouse over the uh, switch and right mouse button click to start. We see positive NG on for engine start. Once we have positive NG, we can move the left throttle lever from off to idle. We can do that through a key press or a binding. I'm using a binding in this case. By that shadow, we can see our rotors are moving. Engine temperature is coming up on engine one. A little bit of torque. And now we're starting to see the RPMs rise for engine one as well as the main rotors too. So with positive rise, let's go ahead and do engine two. Same procedure. Start switch for engine two to up. Positive NG. And now moving the right engine lever from off to idle. You can also see now we have our alignment done, position confidence, uh, very high. So I'm actually gonna move this to the engine system page. And you'll see why here in a second. So as this is coming up, what I'm looking for is the oil PSI for both engine one and engine two to be no more than 70. Once that happens, then I can move the levers from the idle position to the fly position. This will take just a little bit. A77, it's starting to come down. Seventy five. Okay, we're good to go. So now I'm going to use the axes I have assigned to the throttles and move it from idle up to fly. 
our engine page. We're looking for a torque generally around 16, 17 uh, percent or so. We can see the uh, main rotors at 101, and the RPMs for engine 1 and 2 and P are 101 as well. With uh, good engine starts on both, let's go ahead and turn off the APU, cover it, release the parking brake, and we can set our tail wheel as we desire. So folks, I uh, very much hope you enjoyed this look at cold starting 64. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.